Hello everybody, it's Big Sin. Thank you for tuning in. Today I have some weird content for y'all. It's been a while since I dropped like a visual tutorial type deal. I know that's why a lot of y'all came here in the first place because you probably found me from my video of me showing you guys how to make a closure wig, a five by five closure wig from start to finish. It was more like a look and learn. So I'm gonna be doing another one of those today, except we're going to be working with a two by six closures. A two by six closure, one closure. So I'm gonna take a closure off of one of my prior wigs. It was a bang wig, I made a bang. I cut the five by five closure into a bang. After a while I was like, hmm, I want me a bust down. It's been a while since I had a good bust down. Jet black. These will probably be a part of our hair collection soon over on bubblegumtreats.com. We already got amazing bundles and five by five closures. So if this two by six closure is hitting, baby, it's going on the site. The bundles I use on the wig are the same bundles. I've used these bundles. Hold on. I got these bundles first to get a quick weave. That was months ago. I took my quick weave off and reused the bundles again to make my five by five closure wig. I took these bundles off of my closure. Look at these bundles, y'all. I took these bundles off my wig and now I'm about to make another wig. These bundles still good, baby. We reuse bundles over here. Okay, you can do that when you got bomb ass hair. You don't have to be buying bundles every six months. Hello, hello. Hello, is this thing on? Let's get into the video. Oh fuck. I knew I should have changed my battery before, before I set this up. First things first, let's place our cap on our canvas head. It's best to have the tip of your cap laying about eight inches from the base of the canvas head. This is typically where our natural hairlines lay and you want your wig to lay as if it's your hair. Next, we'll go ahead and pin the nape of the cap down. This will ensure that your wig does not move and stays in place as you're working on it. We see that our cap is snug fitting. Now we can move on to the closure. Always make sure that you are putting the hairline of your closure about a half inch or so past the wig cap. You never want to line the closure up with the wig cap. This could cause your wig to slide back. Now on to secure our closure. You always want to start by tying at least two little knots at the very end of your closure. This ensures that your closure will not fall off. As far as sewing our closure down today, we're going to use the lock stitch method. With the lock stitch method, you want to pull your needle through, take the thread that's in the opposite hand, wrap it around your needle two times gently, then pull through. So you're taking your needle, 
in your right hand, pushing your needle through. Next, you'll take the thread that's in your left hand, opposite of what's inside of the needle. This one right here on the opposite side. Wrap it around your needle two times loosely. Then pull the needle to secure. You can pull tightly once you get to the end of the pull. I'm going to repeat this process throughout the whole closure. Insert your needle. Grab the thread that's on the opposite side. Wrap around twice. Loosely. Then pull. This method is great because it's super secure and it's also one of the faster methods. Be sure that your spacing isn't too far apart or else this will cause bulking. Moving on to one of my favorite parts of wig making, which is drawing the guidelines. When doing this, you wanna make sure your lines are about an inch apart. With experience, you can just draw them freehand like I'm doing here. But if you're not so good yet, I'd suggest using a tape measure and drawing lines like mark tiny lines going upward on your canvas head one inch apart. You may also notice that I'm drawing my lines straight across, not curved.
So we're working with three bundles today. Now, as you can see, they are already cut up. They've been cut up because like I said earlier, they've been on a quick weave. I done took it off the quick weave cap and made a wig prior to this. So they have been cut. The wefts are also still double as well. So what I'm gonna do is go in and just sew it as if they're coming off of a regular bundle that hasn't been cut. And I'm gonna adjust the weft as I go. If I have to cut it because it's too long for the line, or if I have to connect some tracks, as y'all can see, that's kind of what I did here on this weft. And the way that I took them off the wig is how I laid them down. So they are, ooh, let me see. Yes, yeah, so they are still in order if you get what I'm saying. Like this is the first track that I took off the back closest to the nape. This is the first row, second row, third row, and so on and so forth. They are in order. So I'm gonna try my best, well not try my best, but I am gonna keep them, keep them in order and just adjust the length of the track as I sew. And you guys will see exactly what I mean as I'm doing it. So we're starting with weft number one. Oh, let me turn on my sewing machine first. <laughs> okay, now we can go. So y'all see, I'm approaching the end of this track. It's too short. I need to add some hair on the end. So I'm gonna take the next track and just connect it to the end. Since this is singled, I'm gonna take a piece off of the track that was already connected. And I'm going to add it to the end of this piece. And you'll see that is damn near a perfect fit. Yep, so I'm gonna come back a little bit. And then I'll overlap the tracks so I don't have to cut it. That's it. So here we go. We got our first weft on. Cut this end. Our first weft is on. Y'all saw how I connected those tracks. Didn't have to cut it anymore. That's weft number one. And that's what I'm gonna do throughout this whole wig. Just gonna take a track, line it up as close as possible to the next, you know, the next line. And if I have to cut it, I will. If not, I'll just connect the track. I'll double it. I'll go back and double it as needed. But y'all see what I'm doing? Okay. Let's move on to the next weft. So we have row number two. This is weft number two. 
I'm gonna take, I'm not gonna double it first. Or maybe, or should I? Hmm, no, I'm not gonna double it because I wanna make sure that the wig is full throughout. So I'll double it later if I have to. So I'm just going to take apart one track. The shortest one was at the bottom, so I will put the shortest weft down first as I did on the last wig. You're just mimicking the same way you did, you laid down your first wig. It's just the same process. You lay your tracks down the same way. Mm, am I out of thread? Nope, it sounded like I was out of thread. Okay. So we've approached the end of this track. So we're gonna take the track that was already connected to that one prior and merge them. So I'm going to have these overlap a little bit. Since this one is longer than the end of the track, since this track extends past the cap, I'm going to cut it. I have to cut it. So, let's see. So, I'm going to cut it a little bit before the end of the cap so the track doesn't hang over and could potentially cause itching. And I'm just gonna finish that up. And there we have our second row down. Nice and flat. and neat. I merged those tracks seamlessly. We blended our tracks seamless as F. Y'all see it? And this is what I'm gonna do throughout this whole wig. Just piece it back together. Now, as far as doubling, hmm because I have more to cover at the top because this closure is smaller. I don't think I'm gonna double these yet. I'm gonna go back and fill them in just so I'm sure that I have enough to cover the top just in case I gotta squeeze in a track somewhere, which I probably won't have to because this is the cap unstretched. So I'll probably be good, but I just wanna be on the safe side. Let's see. Mm, maybe I'll do every other track. Every other track, I will double. Every other uh, row. So I'm gonna double this row.
cut that weft before we get to the end. That's just what I do personally. Some people cut it after they sew it down. I, me, I cut it before I sew it down. And here we have a double weft. Nice and flat, baby. Seamless blend to the cut tracks. You never know. I'm gonna complete the rest of the wig off camera up until I get to the closure area. So when I get ready to close off the closure, I'm going to get y'all back online so y'all can see how I do that. Here we are approaching the top of the wig. So I just have one more weft to go around. I'm showing you guys this because this line is connected to the closure a bit, the back of it really. So I'm going to go ahead and have you guys watch me sew this weft. And as I'm going around it, I'm going to explain to you guys how to sew next to a closure. So here we go. So as you get closer to the closure, you don't want to sew. You don't want to sew like in it, in the closure, on top of the closure. You want your needle to go in and out of the top of the weft and the end of the closure. So you want to keep, you want to have the weft and the closure connected, not overlapping. You feel me? because when you have them connecting, when you have them connecting, you will see, hold on, I'm having a, um, whew, a brain fart. When you have the weft and the closure like connected, not overlapping, but connected as you're sewing, the needle, the thread is going between the closure and the weft, and that's what's connecting the two. And it also makes things flat. So you want to have the needle go through the closure, yes, but don't have your weft on top of your closure. Like you want to put that closure right at the end of that weft. The weft right at the end of that closure. Yep, so I'll have enough wefts to make sure the top is full. Now, as I was going through doing this wig, I did not double the wefts. I stopped doubling my wefts because like I said, I realized I have more space to cover at the top of the wig, so I held off on that. So I'd rather be safe than sorry. I'd rather have a few tracks left over after I'm done with the wig, as opposed to not having none and the wig is incomplete. Now I gotta go back in and remove wefts to bring to the top. I've done it before. I still do it every now and then, but for the most part, I know how to allocate for my tracks. So I'm gonna connect this with Rachel. So we're to this point where we are just sewing a weft straight across here. We're not curving. We're just going straight. Getting closer and closer to closing this wig off.
I'm not gonna cut this with because it's it's not worth cutting. I'm just gonna curve it just slightly upward. It'll still be flat. As long as it's flat still. Here we go. Nice and flat. I'm gonna go ahead and do this other side. I'm going to stick this through the sewing machine as if I went around in a complete circle. And I'm just gonna start from here to complete the other side. Okay, babe, we is done. Check that out. Here we are. Looking good. We're gonna cut this off. And I also wanna show you guys, I have these pieces left. And this is why I didn't want to double them as I was going at first, only because I wasn't sure of how much hair I would have at the top or wouldn't have. Cause I want to make sure the top of the wig is full. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do this off camera, just go in and the rows that have one weft, I'm just going to attach these to make them double as I go just to use all the hair. So we use all the hair. Now I'm gonna cut off our excess cap underneath our closure. Boom, there you have it. Wrapping up this tutorial, in the future, I will have a virtual coil. <laughs> you know what I decided I'm gonna do? I'm going to break this vlog up into a couple of parts. Part one is just, you know, making a wig. Part one is making the wig. I feel like if I put everything together in one setting, it will be overwhelming. So part one, this video, will be just the construction of our two by six closure wig. Part two, I'm gonna show y'all how I bleach the knots and how I'm gonna dye the bundles. That'll be part two. Part three, 
it's probably gonna be me installing this bad boy let's talk about that should i go into story time i don't know i'll save the story time for the installation vlog how about that check out my videos my first video of my first tutorial that i made a while back you can check that out you can check that out to get some pointers on how to make a wig you can also check out a video i did demonstrating how to set up your sewing machine for all my wig making grubs out there purchase my wig cat vendor you is not gonna find these wig caps in the store baby i'm telling you these are the best wig caps you will ever use grab that vendor from your group check out my website bubblegumtrees.com i'm here to give you guys value thank you again for tuning in thank you for subscribing thanks for hanging out i'll see y'all in part two three four five six seven eight bye